we all come with so many new year resolutions what we want to do next year and mashallah some of us we have so long list that sometimes it's very hard to know if you're going to live to see those days of that list or not whatever list that we we, we want to come up with that's fine what I suggest personally for myself and for all of us that the top of our list should be strengthen my relationship with Allah that should be the priority the first thing that comes and my list is to make sure that whatever the relationship that I have with Allah next year I want it to be stronger and better how do I strengthen my relationship with Allah because that is a big thing I want to I want to strengthen my relationship with Allah but how and where do I start there are so many ways you can strengthen your relationship with Allah but the easiest and the best and the fastest and I know because sometimes when we travel we're looking for the shortest way shortcut so to get there as quick as possible the surest and the fastest way to strengthen your relationship with Allah is Salat the best way to communicate and to strengthen your relationship with Allah is Salat that's the bottom line. And I will suggest humbly, brothers, and Alhamdulillah, we all do our prayers, but let your New Year resolution to strengthen your relationship with Allah be, I want to be the one who also pray on time. There's a difference between praying and praying on time. Resolution should be, I want to pray on time. You know why? Because the hadith of the Prophet tells us, he says, Afdalul A'mal As-Salatu Fi Awwali Waqti The best deed, the best deed that you can see in Islam is Salat. By the way, you know that. And we call it in Adhan, Hayya Ala Khair Al. No, what did you do is better than Salat? Nothing. Salat is the best. That's what I said, Hayya Ala Khair Al. Khair Al Amal. Now, this Salat also, it's the best deeds, but the best of the Salat is to do it on time. Brothers and sisters, if we can take this as our resolution for next year, a Salat fil waqt, trust me, we got everything done. And I wanted to say that even one of the resolutions should be in the list, strengthen your relationship with your Imam. That's one of the resolutions should be that I want to strengthen my relationship with my Imam. But how would you do that? You can do that with Salat too. Salat, strengthen your relationship with Allah and your Imam as well. And you know, and I know a lot of you have heard this story of a man who Imam told him, the best you can do for me is to keep your Salat on time. There was a story when Alim is telling this story that happened. It's a real story that happened. And Alim was traveling and he was sitting in the bus. As he was sitting in the bus, the time of Salat came. He was looking what will happen. Then the narration said, before the bus even left, he was hoping that he will have somebody knowledgeable that can sit next to him so they can have a good conversation, educational conversation. Now suddenly a man walk in with the normal clothes, jeans, t-shirts, so he said, Billah, here we go. As they sat next to him, he was, okay, what's going to happen? He didn't say anything to him. No, he said anything to him. He was sitting in the bus move. They got to a place, he started looking at the time. It's time for Salah, but what will happen? Then immediately that young man sitting next to him, he told the driver, can you stop the car? Stop the bus. Say, so, why? Say, so, I want to do Salat. So, you know, there's a lot of people in the bus. What are you talking about? When we get to the bus, that was, that, no, no, now, now, I want you to stop right now. The bus driver said, no, I'm not stopping. 
for you. So if you don't stop, I will throw myself out of the window and get out of your car and your bus. Everybody's looking at this guy, is he crazy? What's wrong with this man? Yes, he was crazy, but in his own world. Then he said to the man, uh, the, uh, the bus driver said, okay, okay, don't throw yourself, I will stop. He stopped. Everybody, mashallah, everybody get the shafa'a. Shafa'a of this guy, made wudu, let's do salah. They did salah. They finished the salah, they sat in the bus. Now the alim was curious, who is this guy? Who is so concerned about salah that much? Then the alim asked, who are you? What's, the, what's your story? He said, Sheikh, now you wouldn't believe. I grew up, I was born and raised Muslim, but I wasn't practicing. I didn't even know what the Salat is all about. I had a mother or grandmother who is in the house. Always she called, Ya Sahib al Zaman. I thought this woman, she is just out of her mind calling someone who. So I didn't even know what the Salat al Zaman is about. He said, until my final year in the school that I supposed to go write my final exams. On my way, I got to a place where they block all the roads. The bus cannot get there. And I'm very, very, I have very limited time to get there. If I don't get there on time, I missed my test. That's it. I'm done. He said, what can I do? He said he was standing there looking left and right. He didn't, he, he didn't know what to do. Then he remembered his grandma at home called someone, Ya Sahib al Zaman. He said, let me call. Ya Sahib al Zaman, you are the only one who can help. Then what happened? Imam al Zaman came and helped him. He said, in a few seconds, I said, I found myself in my building where I supposed to be and write my exam. He said, I saw a man came and took me to my place. He said, when we got there, before he left, he asked, I asked him, who are you? He said, I am an Imam. And then he said, for all this help that you gave me, you saved me. What is it that I can do to help you what you did for me? Give me money? No. Buy me dinner? Take me out? Shopping? No. He said, all I want is take care of your salat and pray on time. He said, from that day, I made what we call tawbat al nasuha I never used to pray. I never used to fight. He said, that incident changed my life. And I promise him, I say, from today, I will be the one praying on time. Not that I'll pray, no, I'll pray on time. And since that day, I never miss my prayer on time. If we really want to strengthen our relationship with Allah and the Imam, the best way is through Salat. And that should be the first part, the phase in our list to do next year. That is number one. Number two, brothers and sisters. One of the suggestions also that should be part of our to-do list next year, inshallah, if Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us alive, which is one of the best thing one can do. Put in your list to help others as much as you can. Brothers, after serving Allah with your wajibat, there is nothing important in Islam like to help other people. Forget whether they are Muslim, non-Muslim. No, don't worry about it. Helping others is the priority after wajibat. And I'm not saying this, you know, when you go, there is one of the maraja, Ayatollah Al-Ankarani. He has one of the sayings where he said, do your wajibat. And after your wajibat, he says, serve people and don't worry about anything else. And when you go, Yom al Qiyamah, Allah asks you, tell him, Al-Ankarani told me to do so. You think an alim will make this bold statement and not know what he's talking about? Do your wajibat and help people as much as you can. And then after that, I said, if Allah asks you, I said, tell him, I told you to do that. 
You go to the Quran, brothers. Every prophet you can see, their priority after Allah is to serve people. Our Imams were the same thing. The best thing to do, brothers, is to help others. Let me go into some details, brothers. You know, when you go to the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks to us. Tells us about when a person passes and dies and leaves this wall. And they go to year after. Some people, they want to come back. And Quran say about them, قَالَ رَبِّ رَجْعُونِ لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُوا صَالَحًا فِي مَا تَرَقُمْ Ya Allah, send me back. Maybe I'm... But Quran didn't say, when they said, لَعَلِّي أَعْمَلُوا صَالِحًا فِي مَا تَرَقُمْ Maybe I will do good when I come back. But Quran didn't tell us, what kind of good are they talking about? Salat, fasting, hajj, zakat, homes. What, what, what are they talking about? Quran didn't mention that. But then Quran go to another ayah to tell you, what is it that they will hope to come back and do? And you will be surprised it's not fasting. It's not reading Quran. It's not even salat. You know what they want to do? And Quran called them in Surah Al-Munafiqun. It said, وَأَنْفِقُوا مِمَّا رَزَقْنَاكُمْ مِنْ قَبْلِ أَنْ يَأْتِيَ أَحَدَكُمُ الْمَوْتِ فَيَقُولُ رَبِّ لَوْلَا أَخَرْتَنِي إِلَىٰ أَجَلٍ قَرِيبٍ فَأَصَدَّقْ وَأَكُنْ مِنَ الصَّالِحِينَ Ya Allah, if you will please give me some time so I can give sadaqah, help others with whatever I have so that I can be mina salihin. That is the importance of giving, helping people in this world. Our Imams, that is their priority. Imam Zayn al Abidin, after Salat al Isha, he doesn't go to bed, he goes out helping people. Our Imam, Quran even said to us in, in many verses of the Quran, Not only that. Quran tells us, إِنَّمَا وَلِيُّكُمُ اللَّهُ وَرَسُولُهُ وَالَّذِينَ آمَنُوا الَّذِينَ يُقِيمُونَ الصَّلَاةِ وَيُؤْتُونَ الزَّكَاةَ وَهُمْ رَاكَعُونَ That is Imam Ali al-Bayt alayhi wa sallam. They always want to give others whatever they have. All the prophets, you go to the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about them. Ibrahim al-Khalil. Ibrahim will not go to bed every night unless he made sure that he serves someone every night he cooks and ibrahim was a good cook too you know that he was a good cook and quran tells about it when the angel came ibrahim what did he do he cooked for them and quran said what a good mashallah barbecue honey in arabic it's called a barbecue all right MashaAllah. Nice one he brought to them. Ta'ala ta'akulun. Eat. There's some food for you. Seven people, right? They said, no, we are not going to eat. So why are you going to eat? That's Ibrahim al Khalid. Every night he will not go to bed unless he feeds someone. And something also to remember when you go to Najil Balagha, Imam Ali has a page that he talk about muhasaba. That every night before you go to bed, you do muhasaba. And the muhasaba, he tells you what to do. Part of the muhasaba, he says that, uh, uh, it says, one of the things that he was recommended is to ask yourself, who did you serve today? Who did you help today? And unfortunately, you know, sometimes when somebody comes asking for help, we feel so bad, we think they're bothering us, they're disturbing us. You know what Imam Hussein alayhi salam said about this? Imam Hussain says, إِنَّ مِن نِعَمِ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ أَنْ جَعَلَ حَوَائِجَ النَّاسِ إِلَيْكُمْ It's a blessing that Allah has put some of the people's needs in your hands. فَلَا تَمِلُّوا فَتُحَوَّلُ إِلَىٰ غَيْرُكُمْ Don't take it lightly and then it will de deprive from you to somebody else. That is to tell us the importance of helping others, being there for others. And when we say help, it can be in any capacity you can. That is, something should be part of our to-do list.